John Thomas, uh, I now do a little bit of fishing, uh, got a small boat, uh, 18 foot, mm. go bass fishing and put a few pots out to catch lobsters and uh, also catch uh, cuttlefish and mainly bass fishing in the winter, catch sea bass. Mm. My great grandfather was a fisherman and he set up the um, Penberth Fish Company in eighteen in the in the eighteen nineties, and uh, they had a big seine net that they caught pilchards with. They call them sardines mm-hmm. now, but they caught and uh, they had hundreds of tons of them, and. Um, they sold them, they sold their own out of it, and they had boats from Mousel and Newlin coming up and taking them out, and they paid so much a basket. Yep. Uh, I started down from birth when I was about, well, I went to sea when I, in the evenings and that, and with a couple of them that fished down there. Uh, when I was probably 12, 13, and then started to go when I was 50, when I left school. And uh, only part-time, because there was then no full-time. There was only two fishing down the cove full-time, and there was no money in fishing. And you started fishing, was this line fishing, how you explain this? All, all line fishing. And, and, and how, what does line fishing sort of entail for, for someone who's never... Well, it's, uh, line fishing is, with a mackerel line, it, it, you've got up to about 25 hooks hmm. uh, on a line, and uh, they're about 10 inches apart between the hooks, about 10 inches, and um, that's for the mackerel. And then with a the bass, you've got a lure... And they've got better over the years. Mm. Initially, you had a rubber uh, that you cut, and that turned uh, the attraction. And then they went on and got these red gills, which are little small fish like that. Mm. Uh, And they got better at making them. And they became the norm to use them. And they've gone on, and they've got better ones now. When I got early 20s, the winter mackerel fishery came here. And uh, to start with, we went in a boat that my father had, and then we went on another chap's boat, and then we bought our own. Uh, This was my cousin and another chap, so the three of us bought uh, a 33-foot boat, built at Tom's Boatyard in Paul Ruin, and... uh, we went, fished out of Falmouth in the winter. And uh, what, what, what was the name of his boat? Was it the Penberth. Boat? Penberth. The yeah. boat was called the Penberth. Mm-hmm. And we, we fished out of Falmouth from about Christmas until April. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, uh, we parted company or we split up uh, probably when I was in my mid-twenties. And I had the Penberth. And the other two, they got another boat. And then we did all right. Um, Mackerel in, crayfish, catch crayfish in nets in the Mm -hmm. summer. And monkfish down the lizard with nets in the spring. And uh, so I was doing quite well and sort of get something a little bit bigger. And the boy Gary was... uh, in his day, a big boat, 38 foot. And the, although the mackerel fishery was wiped out mm. by the Scotch purse centers, mm. we then went on to gill netting, which um, it was the very start of it. No one had yep. started. Mm-hmm. And we started wreck fishing mm. and putting nets on wrecks. Wreck fishing was a, a big thing. Well, the, it was big because there was massive amount of fish that hadn't been fished. Yeah. And um, we'd fish with a hand line on the wrecks. But uh, again, a hand line, you couldn't, you know, we, we have caught 
I don't know, two, three, four thousand stone off a wreck mm. one tide, and you go back next tide and you catch the same again. Mm. Um, and is it is it possible to fish that much nowadays? Or no, no. Now the, the, that that's where we should have been mm. curtailed on what nets or what fish we could catch. No. Nowadays, where we have caught, I think probably we have a six hundred stone. Mm. Uh, in a tier, uh, we started sh just pull, just shooting in the daytime, mm. and then gradually we shot overnight, and that was when we had masses of fish. Okay. And today, what we used to catch in one string, mm. not every string, but we didn't put them back on a wreck if we didn't catch 150 to 200 stone. Mm. Today, they're catching. Uh, with 10 strings, a maximum of uh, three, 400 kilo, kilo a day. Oh, that's so it's a massive, um, a massive decline, but the prices are f five times as much. There's one look. That's what you are. That's what you're after. Look, one small one. Yeah. Well, leave him in there to see whether they'll catch another one. So that's what they're like. But they're normally about five times bigger than that. That there, they they will have you and nip you there. See that? Yeah. That there, I'll give you quite a dig. If it's a big one, he get hold of you. But uh, the, the, the catching small ones is not a good sign. <laughs> how, how, how deep are the ponds when they're on, when they're in the water? Oh, they're on the bottom. Yeah. There is a, is a, is about uh, maybe here is about six I order six fathom, about forty foot. Oh. This, this is what happens. You see, you get yeah. several pots oh. for none, yeah. and then you'll have a and pot have like a this. One. But we did a 68 in one pot, oh. so we couldn't get it in. Yeah. But we undo the trap hatch and get them out. Oh. They skeet ink. Oh, oh. <laughs> like yeah. a like a. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, they shoot. Like in. like a squid. Yeah, yeah. Squid is worse. Uh -huh. Don't they try to sting you with their? No, they they will with that that. Uh, I didn't think that they did, but in there, uh -huh. as like a hook. Yeah. comes out and uh -huh. he had me and they're painful Ooh. they're extremely apparently extremely intelligent yeah, apparently. really intelligent Maybe. they all die see yeah. they all die do they, they come just, in here do they just suffocate in there and then... no no they come in they're like salmon uh -huh. catch a few in here there's some in there but i got another one to put out tomorrow so i'll i maybe put that one in there but uh But they're big ones, they are. But you see, the trouble is, there's about 70 other pots there. So if they get one in them and they go in that, you ain't gonna... The trouble is, there's far too many pots there. That's what it meant to. Whereas if you was only 20 pots there, you can't do very well. How, how does it feel to, to have been on for example, with the boy Gary, where it was a like a, Bigger a pretty big trawler, how does how does it feel to now do a more sort of relaxed version of what well, you did? Well, it's it's a well, it's lot it's lot better. I mean, in a way, um, but obviously with a small boat, it's very difficult. You know, they're still making a living, the best of them, but. Uh, you know, that's why you had to go figure this this in a small boat is a lot better yeah 
because you're fishing quite close to the shore and well this is what I did you know for years yeah. and I've always kept a small one so I've always gone a little bit backling or something like that well I think I think the, 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 the conservation thing is quite a good thing they a lot of countries uh, Australia New Zealand and, and places like that and Norway and that their fishing is regulated and they are miles ahead of what we you know what what we were here the, the problem with lots of things in setting a quota uh, you know I think I said before with those cod that came here that we we never caught any cod uh, and for some reason for two years in the summer where we catch one box we catch a thousand ton of pollock and ling and we'd have one box of cod and for two summers, we if we caught a thousand stone of fish, we had one box of pollock and one box mm -hmm. of ling. So those cod came here from somewhere. Mm -hmm. if, if a fish turns up in massive quantities somewhere, you should be allowed to catch some of it. We didn't because we haven't caught it before. Mm -hmm. We we couldn't catch it. We just land up something like 100 kilo a month, which is ridiculous. They have eventually, which he should have done 25 years ago, had nursery areas. It's quite simple. It's not rocket science. You haven't got to be a brain surgeon to work out that if you leave the fish breed, you will have a lot of young ones. With anything, if you shoot the parents, you haven't got no children. They've got conservation areas up there that they can't fish in. And they... Were, I'm not 100% sure on this, but they probably were shut for two or three months when they come and spawn. They may have been as much as six months, and no boats are allowed in there. But from a small boat's point of view, if they shut off areas on the shore, if you see what I mean, and you can't fish, these are lucrative grounds. There are places where the fish come and you do catch them and go very well. If they block them off or ban you from fishing, which they tend to do in conservation areas, and the conservation areas get too much, the fishermen in small boats, who are finding it extremely tough now, will find it tougher. So it's got to be a little bit of give and take on that side of it, I think. I see. So we fished about 200 wrecks, and if they shut off 50 wrecks, meaning 50 wrecks in, I don't know how many square miles of water, they're not to be fished for one year, two years. We still could have made money and done very well with the other wrecks. So we got two nimrods up there flying around to catch people from not supposed to be catching cod, and yet they wouldn't do it. And the simple thing, if a boat was caught in putting nets on those wrecks, fine him, plenty of money, 50,000, 100,000, Give him one chance. If he's caught again, take his license away. Did you enjoy your boat trip? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was epic.